Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we begin this day with this celebration of the Eucharist, our Lord Jesus teaches us to begin also our day with gratitude in our hearts. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Thanksgiving, this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, 
forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. In these words, prophesy to them. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who have been pasturing themselves. Should not shepherds rather pasture sheep? You have fed off their milk, worn their wool, and slaughtered the fatlings. But the sheep you have not pastured. You did not strengthen the weak, nor heal the sick, nor bind up the injured. You did not bring back the strayed, nor seek the lost, but you lorded it over them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered for the lack of a shepherd and became food for all the wild beasts. My sheep were scattered and wandered over all the mountains and high hills. My sheep were scattered over the whole earth with no one to look after them or to search for them. Therefore, shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I leave, says the Lord God, because my sheep have been given over to pillage and because my sheep have become food for every wild beast for a lack of a shepherd, because my shepherds did not look after my sheep, but pastured themselves and did not pasture my sheep. Because of this, shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, I swear I am coming against these shepherds. I will claim my sheep from them and put a stop to their shepherding my sheep so that they may no longer pasture themselves. I will save my sheep, that they may no longer be food for their mouths. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Please stand. The Word of God is living and effective, able to discern the reflections and thoughts of the heart.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too, go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too, go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, many of us are just starting our day just by looking at you in your uniforms and in your IDs. I know that many of us are starting our day, whether at work, whether at school, or whether our work at home. Would you like to be happy at work today? Would you like to be motivated at work today? Gusto nyo bang maging masaya? Huwag tayong aantok-antok at tayo'y gaganahan sa pagtatrabaho natin. We see the lesson in our gospel passage today about work. And what was the lesson of Jesus about the workers? Jesus is teaching us today to do our work, to do our service, not just with a sense of duty, but with gratitude in our hearts. The workers in the vineyard, in the story of Jesus, did their work with a sense of duty. This is our work. I was hired by the master and the owner of the vineyard. I will be paid the usual daily wage. The owner was just. The duty was just. 
But at the end of the day, surprisingly, some workers were not happy. They grumbled against the landowner. Why? Because they did not have gratitude in their hearts. Madalas po mga kapatid, hindi tayo masaya sa trabaho, nabobord tayo sa trabaho, naiinis tayo at tinatamad sa trabaho, hindi dahil hindi natin alam ang trabaho natin. Hindi dahil ayaw natin yung ginagawa natin. Pero minsan, nawawalan tayo ng pagpapasalamat ng puso. This is what Jesus teaches us today. A good motivation for work is gratitude. Magpasalamat may trabaho. Magpasalamat pinagkatiwalaan tayo. Magpasalamat nakatutulong tayo. Magpasalamat may mga kasama tayo. I think if everyone in the office or at school would have this sense of gratitude, not only a sense of duty, but gratitude and gratefulness, then we will all work happily in our workplaces. The first reading today from the book of the prophet Ezekiel is about the shepherds of Israel, the leaders of the land. I remember a few weeks ago, we had our retreat as priests. And Cardinal Jose Advincula, our Archbishop, gave a talk to us. And this is the topic of his talk about gratitude. He said, as priests, as shepherds, you will be tempted to make a career out of your ministry. And he said, the root of this is lack of gratitude. That is why in our first reading today, we will see that God is telling the leaders and the shepherds of Israel that they have forgotten to become good shepherds. They have become greedy shepherds, working not for the sheep, but working for themselves. Perhaps these shepherds have forgotten to become grateful of the gifts of God given to them, the gift of leadership, the gift of the sheep, of the flock, and trusted to them. When we lack the sense of gratefulness, we will become selfish and greedy at work. My dear brothers and sisters, today, let us be motivated by gratefulness. If we want to be motivated in whatever we do in our day-to-day -day lives, let us remember to be motivated by gratefulness in our hearts. Sa pagsisimula ng ating araw, sa pagsisimula ng ating pagtatrabaho, sa eskwela, pag-aaral at mga gawain, tandaan natin magkaroon ng isang pusong marunong magpasalamat sa ating mga gagawin. Amen. Please stand. God's ways are not our ways because His justice and generosity exceed our standards. We can come to Him in prayer knowing that He listens and that He will not fail us. For every petition, let us say, Father, let Your generosity be among us. Father, let your generosity be among us. That the church, through its missionaries and preachers, may proclaim the Lord's gospel with courage and perseverance. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Father, let your generosity be among us. That we may serve the Lord and one another without expecting merits and rewards, but out of the generosity of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, let your generosity be among us. That those unemployed may find work soon. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, let your generosity be among us. That the sick and the suffering may be comforted by the compassion and understanding of their family and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, let your generosity be among us. That those who have zealously worked in this life may receive their due reward in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, let your generosity be among us. Lord our God, we are your humble servants, and we serve you as best as we can, although you owe us nothing. But we know that you are near to us, and that you bless us with every good thing. We ask all of these through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation, May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our healing rosary for this evening will be hosted by the National Shrine of Mary Help of Christians in Paranaque City. The image of Mary Help of Christians was uh, recently canonically crowned. And so we thank their community for hosting our rosary this evening. And at 9 p.m. tonight, again, every Wednesday, we come together as one to pray the rosary for the healing of the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.